I'm here today at um, ASAP's, the 38th annual ASAP's conference, and I'm talking with Dr. Eva Ciola, who's a plastic surgeon from Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Now, do you, have, you do have a particular interest in stem cell research, fat grafting, and lipo um, sculpture. Can you, do you think these are all linked together and maybe sort of evolve in the future of possibly less implants in the way of silicon and... Um, and saline and more towards the fat transfer. Can you see that happening as a general? Well, the stem cells itself, it's a um, whole big new science, I think. Um, it's, uh, we're going towards more regenerative uh, medicine. Um, and uh, I'm sure sooner or later, maybe not my generation of doctors, but maybe next generations of doctors, will probably be operating more um, on stem cells itself rather than um, traditional ways of uh, plastic surgery. Yeah. And um, the recent trend um, in plastic surgery, um, stem cell research, is that um, the extracellular matter is um, starting to surface out as a scaffold which we can seed, up, seed in stem cells and sort of a form 3D um, structures. Okay. If um, 3D reconstruction or construct, 3D rock construct, uh, um, we will be able to replace implants, that it will be probably a future of the um, breast augmentation surgery. When is it going to happen? I'm not too sure. Uh, there is a lot of uh, lab studies, animal studies, but there is also a lot of restric restrictions from FDAs in, in terms of the isolating cells and manipulating cells. So this is future. I am a visionary and I certainly hope that uh, we probably replace foreign bodies like silicon, polyurethane with a much more natural and um, maybe even your own mm -hmm. uh, parts mm -hmm. to form in a, some form of um, biogenerators. Um, um, implants. Mm -hmm. um, you you specifically asking me about implants, mm -hmm. so I'm specifically yeah. asking. Yeah, of course. Um, and I think it will be probably the future, maybe next twenty years. Okay. I don't know. Okay. You, we can check yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I won't be probably here yeah. <laughs> anymore oh, in the be. profession. <laughs> yeah. But um, we can check. Yeah. No, that's great. I think we're getting a lot of people asking about it as well. So people are really interested in looking for an alternative to... Um, yeah, well, with the recent replacement uh, of uh, breast augmentation with uh, just a simple fat transfer, mm -hmm. we're going definitely more towards exactly. that. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's exciting. That's great. Thank you for that. Now, you're the first female plastic <coughs> surgeon to achieve a couple of milestones in South Africa. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> but do you see more women entering the plastic surgery um, field? And, and what do you think women can bring to the industry, perhaps, that might not be first nature to a man? It's a big topic. Mm. And I'm a big fan of this topic uh, because um, I was actually first uh, female um, plastic surgeon uh, qualified from the university, um, which I had my postgraduate training. Mm -hmm. So it was a tough road in the beginning. Uh, um, it was uh, difficult to get through to the boys' club, um, but um, you can. Yeah. You can. You can do yeah. that. And um, it was about ten years ago when I qualified, and since then, I already trained five girls um, in my department yep. so it was it was great achievement when I started my training there was probably about eight uh, female plastic surgeons in South Africa mm -hmm. now we're probably going into the 20 something wow yes so definitely in such a short time yeah definitely 
Um, I will strongly encourage females to go to that particular um, discipline. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to be a surgeon, mm -hmm. if you are a female, this is probably the most uh, most um, applicable uh, discipline for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you have many men <clears throat> men coming to see you? Or? They coming, but they probably about. Um, I would say probably 20% of my cosmetic practice, um, but it's escalating, mm -hmm. it's becoming more popular, um, and especially with my uh, interest in liposculpting mm -hmm. and liposuction uh, combined with the um, uh, fat transfers. Mm -hmm. I get them more and more because they aim for easy way of getting their six abs yep. and yep. nice pegs yep. uh, and nice arms yep. and this can be achieved uh, within um, operation which lasts about five, six hours. Yeah, perfect. Lovely, thank you for that. And your interest <coughs> in the face and the way it ages um, would make you aware of not only all of the surgical procedures but also the non-surgical procedures that are available today um, as well. So I'm just wondering, I know you've got an interest in vasa lipo, but is there anything in particular that you prefer to do as a treatment on people, or can you expand on that a little bit? Well, <clears throat> it's not the matter of preference, it's the matter of um, selecting your patient and um, getting the right age and right treatment. Mm -hmm. um, let's put it that way. Um, up to... Yeah. 40 years of age, 40 plus years of age, we can still maintain with the very non-invasive um, um, treatments like the marsh, like um, other um, radiofrequency treatments. Mm -hmm. um, we can fill up a bit, uh, we can uh, maintain um, uh, with Botox, not to get uh, permanent wrinkles. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the fifth decade, um, and we're starting to losing the volume on the face, um, it requires a little bit more aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. And then we're probably talking about uh, fat transfer, which I'm uh, quite uh, um, enthusiastic about, yep. um, because um, any fat transfer contains stem cells, mm -hmm. So there is a component of rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. So obviously um, it's a, just a tailoring um, the treatment to the patient needs. Um, I am in favor of radiofrequency um, as for invasive and non-invasive procedures. Um, and it is just because um, it's not such a... Um, energy, high energy treatment, mm -hmm. so it doesn't damage your tissue to the extent that uh, you cannot use fat. So if I do liposuction with your radio frequency um, enhanced, um, like a vasotherapy, um, I can use still that fat to enhance the, fa the, the face, yeah. to put it in the breast, um, so it's a sort of a double um, um, double benefit for me um, with the um, using laser um, we operate on much higher energies and then unfortunately they damage the uh, fat cells mm -hmm. and I can't use it anymore it's okay. just uh, for purposes of liposuction right. so okay. that's my rationale about yeah. using radiofrequency in my okay. treatments so basically it depends on what the person needs as to what treatment protocol absolutely. you use absolutely absolutely yes, yes. Oh, lovely. well thank you so much for taking the time thank to you today. very much thank you for having me thank you <laughs>